All right. Uh, so I'm here playing Slay the Spire. Uh, this is a brand new file. I'm not going to play my almost complete one, obviously. And let me turn that way down because I forgot how loud it is when you first start this game. So anyways, if you're not familiar with this game, then you live in a hole or something. It's a deck building game, you know, similar to uh, DC deck building or Marvel Legends or things like that. But yeah, you can see I got like nothing unlocked. Uh, so obviously my only choice right now is the Ironclad. Uh, so let's get this going. Yep, I don't even get a uh, Neow Blessing. I forgot all about that. It's been a long time since I played this from scratch, but uh, we'll see what we can do and what we can come up with. Yeah, I understand how to play the game. So basically you have energy right here and you can see that cards right there cost energy to play and the idea is to uh, maximize your damage and buffs while minimizing your uh, damage received, you know. There's all sorts of crazy cards as you get further along in the game and do more unlocks and you unlock, you know, characters with totally different play strategies. Um, his strategy is basically to just buff himself with strength as much as possible to do more damage. Uh, or he has a meta where he burns cards out of his deck, like literally removes them from play. Um, he also has one where he can hurt himself. Uh, so he has a lot of different like high attack options and like you know a defensive deck you can build around him but uh, I don't think any of those are unlocked this early on in the game uh, so we're going to go with twin strike it's just a halfway decent card for not having anything um, okay so you know you're going to run into events on those little question marks um, this one, it will let you either upgrade a card in your deck. This is your deck right here, so I could upgrade the Twin Strike I just got. Or, if I feel like becoming cursed, I can obtain a special relic that will upgrade a card like every turn, like a random card that I've drawn. And curse, of course, it says unplayable while in hand, lose 1 HP whenever you play another card. Which is bad in some cases, but I also, if you look up here, I heal six at the end of every combat because that's my starting relic and you're gonna see I get more relics as the game goes on so I'm gonna yes I understand I'm gonna go ahead and take that that is really powerful and you'll have a chance to remove curses as you play for example in a shop uh, we're not in ascension mode so there's events that let you remove curses and cards more frequently uh, than if we were playing in some of the harder game modes that are available to you uh, but anyways, yeah, so here you go. As you see, here's pain, and uh, one damage, one damage, and I don't need to play any defense because he's not doing anything. <laughs> oh, I love that sound. But yeah, it's just a fun game, but I like deck building games in general. Um, I have, like, pretty much all the DC deck building games. Um, pretty much all the games by that company, like the Cerberus game system. You know, they have one for like Naruto and Cartoon Network and Rick and Morty and Lord of the Rings and all kinds of crazy things. Uh, and I have a very large collection of those. I am a huge fan. And I feel like that one plays a lot more similar to this than some of the other deck building games I'm familiar with. Um, I can't think of the name of the one right now that was really popular a few years ago. Um, one of my friends is really into it, but um, God, for the life of me, I just can't remember what it's called. Um, Ascension, that's another one. You know, this is kind of like Ascension, too. Um, in that you have energy that you build up to play cards. Uh, of course, in the DC game, energy is referred to as um, power. And you build up power by playing cards. Yep, got it. Okay, so here's, here's one, an example of his meta. Uh, corruption. Skills cost zero whenever you play it, exhaust it. So... By exhausting cards, the Ironclad weeds cards out of his deck for the rest of that uh, battle and gets a benefit from it. Um, 
Uh, exhaust meta can be extremely powerful, especially if you have the Dead Branch Relic that replaces every exhausted card with a new card. Uh, this is another meta of his, uh, Upgrading Searing Blow. You basically take this card, stop upgrading anything that is not Searing Blow, get an Armaments in your deck which lets you upgrade a card when you play it, and your goal is to just get this as strong as possible and have as few attacks that are not Searing Blow in your deck as possible. But we're just going to go something simple and shrug it off. Uh, in case you can't tell by picking up all those Twin Strikes, I am looking for a Perfected Strike which will, uh, and you see I just got to remove pain there for 50 gold, uh, but a perfected strike will get stronger as I get more strikes in my deck. So we're going to go ahead and upgrade that. And this is a rest site, so I could have either rested or uh, smith, and after I beat the game a few times, it'll give me the option to get a piece of the uh, key that lets you fight the true final boss, which is a pain in the ass and I tend not to do that. It's like, you know what, I got the achievements for it in my other file so I kinda don't give a shit anymore. Um, but yeah, and you'll notice that I'm not blocking that much with the Ironclad, because not only is this the very beginning of the game, like, no ascension, no modifiers, nothing, but I also heal at the end of every round. Um, he is pretty indestructible, all things considered. Um, you don't have to worry about taking damage too much with him. And uh, after they finish their turn, I'll show you something else here. And if you wonder why I'm describing like a game that everybody's seen, like you haven't played it, because you know the only people watching this have not played it. <laughs> uh, you know, including my uh, lovely fiance here. It's probably just listening to my voice right now. But this is the boss at the end of the stage. Um, this one, the guardian, is very easy. Uh, if it was the hexaghost. Um, he doesn't attack based on how much health you have, so you'd actually want to be taking damage um, to negate how hard he hits you, because um, he'll do up to, I think, like 7 by 6 damage, um, which is pretty rough, but if you're down below like 50% of your health, it gets like pretty manageable. I think he can do like 18 damage at his lowest, uh, and you can block that pretty easily. Whereas blocking like 36 damage is a lot harder to do and can really uh, kind of screw you over. So this game does encourage you to think and use strategy. Um, so that card that just disappeared, these guys put exhausts in your deck. They're unplayable cards that just chunk up your hand and prevent you from drawing cards you actually need. That's one of the reasons I took a shrug it off just in case I ran into this battle. So I would still have the ability to dr either draw more of those out so they'll go away, or to draw past them, so I can get something to actually hit these guys with. So he's one hit away from death, and I have a pretty good chance of drawing a lethal card, uh, which I did, and it got upgraded, so it was super lethal. Uh, wing Boots, you may ignore paths when choosing the next room to travel to three times. That is not too bad. Uh, we are going to take... Oh, here's here's Wound Meta. Um, you can add wounds to your deck, and there's a power that lets you draw cards when you draw statuses, like those dazes or this wound. And you can also exhaust those wounds out of your deck, and this will fit in with an exhaust meta as well, um, because it's a very powerful block. Uh, I don't think we need it uh, playing the very most basic form of this game, so we're going to go ahead and take a cleave for the second floor, which has a lot of uh, multi-enemy attacks. So let's go ahead and smith. Uh, we'll smith that cleave just so that it's always upgraded when we draw it. But you can see I can pick any path because of the wing boots. But I am heading for this shop, so... Actually, no, let's switch to this one. Then we get a shop and two rests, and we can fight another elite. Uh, you'll see there's elites, enemies, and elites are powerful enemies that give you a relic when you beat them. Uh, that's what those triangle looking guys the sentinels were just now tori whenever you would receive five less or less unblocked attack damage reduce it to one it's very good um so we're going to just continue straight save some of our wing boot charges for later uh this is another example of where cleave is really handy if i can get it with shrug it off uh could not which is fine we'll just hit those guys a couple of times so 
you know, they're going to hit me for a little bit of damage. Not a big deal. Uh, Sitori negated his five down to one, which makes it even less of a big deal. And now they're dead. So screw those guys. Uh, Shockwave is pretty good. Uh, you'll see weak there in the corner there. I'll let you read that, what weak and vulnerable will do. Um, it also exhausts, so it's part of all his builds. Basically, you can use vulnerable for strength builds, do more damage. You can use it as an exhaust build and let uh, Dead Branch replace it. Um, it's just an all-around good card. Uh, we'll probably go ahead and take it. There's, there's no reason not to. And we will also smith it because it exhausts itself. We want to make sure that it's always upgraded when we draw it. Uh, we can't rely on warp tongs to hit it every time. So this is a shop. You can buy relics and cards here. You can also remove cards. Uh, I tend to play more lean decks. I think I think thinned out deck meta is uh, a lot easier because you're more frequently drawing the cards you want. That being said, a perfected strike deck is a very large deck and it relies on having more cards. Um, so you use the deck removal to remove things that cost too much like bash so that you can play your perfected strikes that cost two energy. Uh, but let's see, I don't necessarily want any of this stuff. Um, I probably will just remove a card here and it will probably be a basic defend. Uh, you want to get rid of these basic cards. Like if you're not going for perfected strike or there's a relic that you can unlock later with the new character that gives all strikes plus three damage. Like if you're not doing something like that, you want to get rid of these strikes and defends and replace them with stronger things like twin strike or shrug it off um, whenever possible. Um, they're, they're just kind of basic cards that are going to clog up your deck. Um, uh, we'll go ahead and rest before this elite because um, the only two elites that we haven't faced yet are the Gremlin Knob and the Lagavulin, both of which are can be tough, especially because we're in the very early game and our selection of cards is, is mediocre at best. Uh, so it is the Gremlin Knob. Um, he's about to buff himself, which you'll see. Yep. Uh, so he has Enrage. Anytime I play a skill, he gets two strength uh, in this current game mode, which means that he'll get stronger and stronger if I try to defend against him. So we don't want to defend against him. We want to just hit him as hard as I can. Uh, we could have played Shockwave. I'm not going to. It's, he's not going to give us that much of an issue, quite frankly. Um, not as ironclad. I, you know, in the next turn we should be able to kill him. We just need two strikes or a single perfected strike. Uh, we did take a bit of damage, which is why I went ahead and healed before this battle. Uh, Red Skull, while well, your HP is at or below 50%, you have three additional strengths. So he does have cards that allow him to hurt himself. Uh, we're going to take Impervious, just a good card. Um, so he'll do damage to himself to, like, you know, draw cards and get energy or do a big attack and things like that. And eventually that will trigger Red Skull, which will give him strength, which will make things like my Twin Strike more powerful because, you know, upgraded, that's seven damage twice. And if I had Red Skull activated, that's plus another six damage. Three for the first hit, three for the second hit. So strength works really well with multiple hits. And he has quite a few cards that let you hit more than one time. So uh, that's why you usually go for what they call strength meta. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, upgrade this one again. It's an exhaust card, so we only get to play it one time. And we want to make sure that it is always upgraded without having to rely on the Warp Tongs. All right, so here we are playing Mr. Guardian. Uh, we're just going to hit him a few times. So you'll see after you hit him a certain amount of times, he switches mode Whoops. Uh, to what you call defensive mode. So there we go. Impervious just blocks that entire hit. I could have also transformed him, but um, I want to finish explaining this. Uh, so when I hit him one more time after this, he's going to switch to a defensive mode that he's going to have thorn damage. Uh, so he f starts out with a shield, which is, you know, if I had enough strength, I could have broken through it and done free damage. But uh, he's going to turn on his thorns. So anytime I attack him, I take three damage. So now I got to consider that. 
Uh, we'll go ahead and play that and burn it out of our deck. Um, so he's going to do that and then more damage. And the point of these first four bosses is to just kind of get you used to the game. And especially if you haven't played it before, um, they want you to understand things like, like, you know, he switches modes and has a lot of heavy attacks. So that'll prepare you for those kind of, kinds of things later on. Um, I don't think anybody else switches modes, but they do have phases that they go through. Um, the slime boss, um, you know, he makes it hard for you to play your deck the way you want because he fills it with uh, slime status cards. And, you know, there's enemies in the game later that make it very hard to play your deck, just like the ones who put dazes in it. And then you have uh, Hexaghost, which scales very fast for a first floor boss. And there's a ton of enemies later in the game that will do what they call scaling, where they get stronger and stronger the longer you take to defeat them. And that's what Hexaghost does. So you want to try and beat him uh, as quick as possible. All right, so we're just going to block both those for right now. And, you know, I have potions up here. Um, if I drink them, they let me do things. This one draws more cards. This one would have given me more strength, um, which I probably should have been doing this whole time. I kind of ignored the fact I even got them. But now you can see Twin Strike does 9 plus 9 damage as opposed to 7 plus 7 damage. And uh, we're going to do that and that. Yeah, you heal to full um, in these early game levels uh, after boss fights, so I'm not too worried about if I take too much damage. Like next turn, even though I'm going to take 3 per hit, I'm probably just going to kill him if I have it. Yeah, which I do. Uh, but that's, that's the game in a nutshell. You know, it's not a hard game, so uh, you beat a boss, you get a choice of rare card. Uh, deal 4 damage to all enemies. He'll each be equal to unblocked damage. That's good with strength because um, the stronger it gets, the more you heal. Uh, I love Juggernaut, but it's not really the deck for it. It's so whenever you gain block, deal 5 damage to a random enemy. And here's part of his exhaust meta. You draw a card every time you exhaust, and you know, they all upgrade to do different things, of course. Uh, we're going to skip all of them. I don't really, I don't really want any of those in my deck right now. And you also get a boss relic at the end of it. So our choices are Sacred Bark, Astrolabe, and Calling Bell. Want to pick up, obtain a unique curse through relics. Double the effectiveness of potions. So like this one will go from draw three to draw six. And this one will transform and upgrade card. So when you transform a card, it'll turn it into a random card. Uh, so like if you, but it doesn't work on like curses and stuff. Curses transform to new curses. But if I got it here, this would transform and upgrade to new ironclad cards which if you're out of ideas and you don't have really a deck meta going yet um, that's not a bad idea to try and get something happening I'm gonna go ahead and take this uh, this used to be get three curses three random curses and three relics but now you just get this curse of the bell unplayable cannot be removed from your deck that is not bad at all uh, you know you have one bad hand so that usually won't affect you until you're playing the higher game modes so we got that, and look at that, well worth it. Blood Vial, at the start of each combat, heal two. I also heal six at the end. Frozen Egg, uh, whenever I get a power, it's immediately upgraded. And Ice Cream, energy is now conserved between turns, which is amazing. Um, so now we gotta figure out ways to get him more energy to conserve between turns. Um, you know, Now ideally you want a relic that gives you more energy after fighting a boss, but just did not happen this time. Um, all right, so I'm going to go this way. We'll go ahead and do that, make their hits useless, although they kind of already are because of Tori. Uh, and these guys are an example of scaling. Um, you know, they're hard to take down because they have flight. Uh, you can see over there in the what it does um, and they get stronger the longer you take to fight them so you want to do something like that then you can take out that guy and then we can do that and 
and you know I don't mind taking ones even though they add up a bit I don't mind doing that because I'm going to heal so much with him so he should be dead shrug it off okay not was I what yeah not what I was hoping for there um, I was hoping to get a twin strike or something wasn't really paying attention to what I have and haven't drawn already uh, so yeah, I know uh, it's been about 8,000 years since I made a video on anything. Um, I never really intended YouTube to be that kind of thing for me. It was just kind of a uh, fun way to kill some time. Um, I was doing it up north, just uh, kind of combat loneliness a bit. Uh, so there's an upgraded corruption, which is not good for us because we never got Dead Branch. Um, and that's part of the exhaust meta as well. And there's strength and exhaust meta right there. Uh, don't particularly want any of those. Even though we have Red Skull, it's so rare for us to get that damage that this would never be useful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't forget. I just don't want them. Okay. Uh, so we can either get 99 gold or the Ritual Dagger. It field deal 15 damage if it kills an enemy permanently increase its damage by three uh, that can be really good um, I kind of want the gold because I'm going for a shop like just a matter of which shop and we'll see hmm I was trying to think of a path here checking my phone obviously And, you know, we also have wing boots, so I can switch paths on the fly if I need to. So let's keep going the way I was going. Uh, yeah, so like I was saying, uh, you know, haven't done anything in a video in like a million years. Um, but that was never really what it was for. And I'm sure I mentioned that way back whenever, um, that you know this was always just a, a means for me to feel less lonely and give me something to talk about with the people that I was expecting to watch it um, and of course right now you know I'm uh, with somebody new and uh, don't get to see her as much as I'd like at the moment and uh, don't have a lot to do in my my uh, my apartment so it's like yeah you know I dragged everything out and was like Let's play some Slay the Spire, because I am playing it anyways. Um, so the thieves had thievery. They were stealing gold from me every hit. This one got away because I could not do enough damage, which is a little annoying because, like I said, I was trying to go for a shop here. Um, there's part of the exhaust meta. That's part of his defense meta. You know, he has a card that you get later on that will let you not lose any of your block between turns. Um, but we're going to go with Thunderclap. It's a cheaper option than than Bash, which costs two. And even though Bash applies a lot more vulnerable, I can play this for one and just do a lot of damage that single turn, which frankly is better most of the time, uh, if, you, if you ask me. So we are going to go to this early shop, and we're going to see what we can get. Uh, there you go, Vajra started to combat with one strength. We're definitely going to do that. And uh, I'll let you read those. Um, so starting combat with one strength will turn this into innate deal seven damage to all enemies. And I personally like that a lot. Um, I'm tempted to go for that. We can also remove a card. We can remove this bash, which we're going to end up doing. Uh, because again, like I said, bash costs two and applies two vulnerable. On its upgrade, it only applies three. Well, Shockwave applies 5 for 2, and it weakens the enemy. Uh, that is a much better card. And I also have, you know, if I'm in a pinch, the Thunderclap to keep the vulnerable going. Uh, so, we'll just do that. Uh, we are going to jump over here to this question mark. Question mark spaces are pretty good. Okay, so I ran out of gold, so I, if I want to obtain Shame, at the end of turn, gain 1 Frail, which means that... Um, I'm going to do that. Eh, that's not that great. Uh, so what Frail does is 
Yeah, you uh, gain 25% less block from cards. You notice I don't block a lot anyways, so I can deal with that until I have an opportunity to take it out of my deck. Um, yeah, we'll go for this elite. Alright, so we're fighting the Kremlin leader. Uh, he's an example of scaling. He's going to get stronger and stronger as this battle goes on. Um, he'll buff himself and his minions with increasingly large amounts of strength. So, you're going to want to uh, take him down as soon as possible. Once he's down, uh, once he's down, then they all run away. Uh, I would like to point out that his horn is broken. There is a relic called Gremlin Horn. And whenever an enemy dies, you get an energy and draw a card. So here we go. We're going to do this, even though it buffs him a little bit, because he has Enrage being a tiny gremlin. Um, still well worth the cost of admission here. So he's going to hit me a little bit. And I finally drew my Shockwave, which should allow me to kill him very quickly at this point. Uh, especially if I can draw back into my my uh, uh, cleave and hit him and all his minions at once. Yeah, see, so he just buffed them and he's gearing up for bigger and bigger attacks. So if he wasn't weak, um, that would be doing 25% uh, more damage, which is not good, but he's dead, so who cares. And we get one amount of fan. Every time you play three attacks in a single turn, gain four block. It's not too bad. Uh, there you go. Demon form. At the start of your turn, gain three strength. So since we haven't found a perfected strike, that'll make these twin strikes. And we should have probably taken pummel strike, now that I think about it. Um, that'll make those uh, increasingly powerful until they can basically one-hit KO. Um, so we can either choose one of 20 cards and look for a perfected strike or something that'll work with demon form or you can heal um, so there's another twin strike and there's the perfected strike I was looking for aha uh -huh, sword boomerang so deal three damage to a random enemy three times upgrades to four times and that's gonna get stronger and stronger as you um, build up strength so the fact that they haven't offered me any perfected strikes makes me think that this is the only one I'm ever gonna see I'm gonna go ahead and take sword boomerang and if we have to, we'll start removing strike if give, strikes if given the option. Uh, so we're going to rest a little bit. Um, our boss is the uh, the champion. Uh, he can be a little tough, um, especially since we don't have a lot of like fantastic cards. Although anchor will help start each combat with ten block, um, so we'll have a good opening turn at least. Uh, hmm. Yeah, we'll go for the question mark right now. Let's save our gold for the next floor. So you can see that this now does 4x4 four four damage because it upgraded and I start each combat with one strength. So that was not a bad turn. Uh, 29 damage to the uh, Sneko who just confused us and whenever you draw a card it randomizes its costs. Um, is a little bit annoying because they'll range from zero to three now so high cost cards more likely to be low cost low cost cards more likely to be high cost uh, middle cards that cost two um, just as likely to be three as they are one or z zero actually more likely to be one or zero but you, you know what I'm saying uh, they're middle of the road cost so you know, there is a relic that gives you permanent confusion, and at that point you'd want to get as many 2 and 3 cost cards as you can. But thankfully we have Ice Cream, so um, if we run out of cards that we're able to play, we can just save the energy for Ice Cream and be more likely to play our uh, increased cost cards after that. And you see I just got 4 block from Ornamental Fan, which is going to help me uh, continue to not take damage. And that's going to activate runic de dodecahedron right here um, so let's just do that 
Uh, we need a copy of Whirlwind. We're doing a strength deck now. And Whirlwind needs to be upgraded immediately. So X cost cards, they just play for however much energy you have uh, currently in your pool. So we're going to do that and that. Uh, so if we can draw a Whirlwind, we'll have 3 by 9. Uh, no, actually, no, 3 by 12 because we're about to get 4 strength. Yep. Yeah, which is... Uh, gonna kill him. Um, right, I stand corrected. There's a perfected strike. We'll just take it for an early draw damage while we build up strength of demon form. Um, so Nalot's Gift uh, gives you triple the chance of finding rare cards. Um, so let's think about this for a minute because I want both of those. Do I need rare cards? What am I gonna get this early in the game? More demon forms? A chance at a reaper that I skipped earlier? You know, um, yeah, so we're going to skip that for now. Um, and you can see Wing Boots is grayed up because the relics used up. So relics with charges uh, can can get used up, which is not a bad thing. That's that's what they're supposed to do. All right. And I know I'm talking a lot about this game and kind of lost uh, track. So there you go. See, it's an early perfected strike. It gets three additional damage for every strike I have. A card containing strike, rather. Um, all right, let's just do that. Uh, but, you know, um, I'm assuming an unfamiliarity with the game. Um, and just kind of going over some of these things. And I'll do that less and less as this goes on. Because um, you can always just, I can always just do this and you can pause it and read it if you're that curious. But this is not a difficult game to understand. Um, I think it's a difficult game to master. It can be, it can get very hard. But it's easy to understand. And that's one of the things that makes it so great um, is just the fact that. Uh, it's not a hard game to get into the the groove of, so to speak. Um, not to be confused with the Madonna song. Although, uh, this boy does have to prove his love to me. Uh, just saying. <laughs> so here we are with the champ. Um, he's an annoying boss. I think um, there's more annoying second floor bosses you can face. Um, so we're just going to block and do that. Unfortunately, this is one of the times where I don't want the Frail to be hitting me. Because he starts hitting very hard. But uh, we got Demon Form, so we're alright. Um, so I'll just start taking damage at this point. Uh, and to be fair, he makes you Frail anyways, so... Uh, I guess it's not the biggest deal ever. But... You know, at this point, we want to knock him down. Once he gets to half or below, um, he will clear all debuffs, get a ton of strength, and hit you for a times two damage attack, uh, which can be uh, one blow fatal uh, if you've let this fight drag on enough. So we do have to be aware of that. You know, uh, we want to get him down there, though, as fast as we can before he starts giving himself things like more strength or metallicize where he gets free defense every turn um, you know and I'm not saying that we'll survive this fight because um, it is not looking too good um, Like, he doesn't heal himself for this buff that he's about to do, so we do have a shot. This will help. And basically, we need to get lethal this turn or we're dead. And if we die, it's not that big a deal. Like I said, uh, these early games, you have no cards unlocked. You're playing the most basic form of Ironclad you have. Your options are, are strength or nothing <laughs> at this point. 
Uh, but we were able to beat him there with that perfected strike, so I am glad I picked that up. Um, we have enough sources of vulnerable. I'm going to take the blood potion. So here's some uh, rare cards. Uh, this gain the vulnerable and an energy at the start of every turn. Uh, lose one HP and draw a card. And whenever you gain block, deal seven damage to a random enemy. Um, frankly, I don't think any of those fit. Because, I mean, with ice cream, Berserk could be good. No, all right, yeah. I talked myself into it. Okay, so my choices are Philosopher's Stone. Uh, gain energy. All enemies start combat with one strength. Uh, you know, Black Star. You get two relics from elites. And this one, I can no longer obtain potions. Um, I only really want this blood potion for the final boss, so I'm going to go ahead and take Sozu. Um, and my final boss is the Awakened One. Uh, he gains strength as you play powers, and right now we have two powers. So that's going to give him six strength, which uh, can be pretty pretty devastating, but um, you know we'll think of ways to counter that. Uh, as we ascend up this floor. Um, but yeah, and, and this is one of those games where you might find it frustrating the first few times you play. Um, and that is perfectly alright, because not everyone's into deck building. Um, not everyone's going to understand the meta right away of uh, how to play this game. But it's a fun game to experiment with. And like the very first, when it first came out, I was having an absolute blast with it. I mean, I played it so much since then. Um, um yeah, just having fun experimenting with the different cards and seeing what they do. And, uh, you know, it's well worth it, I think. Um, especially if you want to learn how to play deck building games. So, Uppercut uh, is a good card. Deal 13 damage, apply 2 weak and 2 vulnerable. Uh, that'll help mitigate the increased damage uh, that the Awakened One's doing after Shockwave wears off. So, And it's upgraded, so uh, we're going to go ahead and take that. And then we're going to go here. Of course, that question mark ended up being a combat. Not the best thing ever. Um, but that's all right. Uh, the orb walkers are not too tough for someone like Ironclad. Um, we do have a very aggressive deck. So between that and that perfected strike I just drew, I think we're fine. Alright, well that was easy and we get healed up. Uh, Rampage is only good if you get it early in the game. Deal 8 damage, increase this card's damage by 8. Uh, on the non-upgrade version that's increased it by 4, I believe. Uh, so Rampage, you want a very tiny deck and you want tons of draw. Uh, and a uh, headbutt that'll put Rampage from your discard pile back on top of your deck. And the idea is to play Rampage, headbutt, draw a card, Rampage next turn. And keep doing that until Rampage does, you know, like 80, 90 damage a hit. And you also want your deck to be like uh, 15 cards or less to really make this an effective Rampage deck. Um, so we're obviously we don't need that. Uh, that is not fitting into what I'm doing here. Uh, Writhing Mass, I really hate this guy. Um, out of all the buffs and nerfs and things that they've done in this game, I mean, they've nerfed him a little bit. But uh, frankly, this needs to be an elite fight. This guy's an absolute fucking pain. And each time you hit him, he changes what he's going to do. Like, he'll do stronger or weaker attacks. He can put curses in your decks. Uh, like, they straight up put a parasite in your deck, which lowers your max HP when you remove it. Yeah, look at that. He's now... And that doesn't do anything. Wonderful. Uh, I forgot about that. Oh boy. All 
All right, so five by three is not that bad. But we definitely want to get rid of him as soon as possible. All right, and you saw I tried to get that strength potion, but uh, Sozu would not let me. And we don't need any of those. Whoa, wait, no, I'm not going that way, am I? Um, I don't know, I might go this way. So if I can beat them, I will get a rare relic. Um, do I want to try and fight them for a rare relic? <sighs> Fine, we'll do it. Uh, I normally skip this fight, and I know there's people who will take it at the drop of a hat and not even think twice about it. Um, but I personally think, because it's like the amount of rare relics you can get, it's like the odds of it being one that's going to like affect your deck positively and like just give you the winning combination that you somehow didn't already have. Um, I think it's pretty low. Um, like, and the potential to die in this fight or take a ton of damage, like we're doing, is, is so big, you know? Um, it's very much a risk reward, uh, one of the more extreme examples, I think, that this game offers you as you as you play through it. Alrighty, so we got Peace Bite. You can now remove cards at rest sites. That's pretty good. Uh, seeing red will just flat out give us extra energy for the ice cream. And of course, uh, apply too weak to all enemies. Um, we'll do that. Lose all gold, obtain a relic. Uh, red Mask, although it's a good relic at the start of combat, apply one weak to all enemies. I want the gold because I'm heading for a shop and I do plan to spend it. So we're going to go ahead and toke out that shame. Um, and then we're going to go here. So as you head upwards, flopping from one floating shape to another, you slip, you begin to fall. <sighs> uh, let's lose Berserk. Uh, that'll give us one less power to buff the awakened one with and we're not really having energy problems right now especially since we got sozu um so this is the nemesis uh his next turn he's going to go intangible which means that i can only do one damage to him um which kind of sucks but uh hopefully we'll get demon form soon and um yeah so we're going to play that and that's just free energy later on and uh, you can see that even though I did all that, he took three damage. Um, yeah, I'm going to save him pervious. He can end up hitting pretty big if he wants to. Okay. And there's our demon form. And we're going to have seven energy next turn. Pretty good. Alright. We'll keep him weak and vulnerable forever. Yeah, there you go. 33 damage. But we can do that. 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 And now he's almost dead. Okay, I just wanted to get that up to block the burn from hitting me. <clears throat> Alright, come on. And he's dead. So, a little bit of rough 
Combat Tungsten Rod. This is a new one. Came out with the new character. I uh, didn't know that it was in the, like, just starting out game. Uh, whenever you would lose HP, lose one less. That's really good because whenever you would see five or less unblocked attack damage, reduce it to one. And watch. Yeah, see, Sozy wouldn't let me pick that up. Uh, none of those. Bronze scales, not too bad. That gives us three thorns, like the guardian that you saw earlier. Um, ooh, chemical X. We have to get that for our whirlwind. Uh, that's useless to us. Um, we'll get that because between that and ornamental fan, we're playing three attacks a lot. Uh, and we're out of money. Okay, the Maw, he can be a little annoying. So let's go ahead and do that and conserve our energy. Okay, and you'll watch. He'll take three damage for hitting me right now. Yep. Alright, so hopefully we can draw into that team in form soon. <coughs> Excuse me. My throat is a little bit dry right now. I forgot to bring some water with me. Uh, you know, again. Been a while. <laughs> All right, so we'll just do that. Uh, it's okay. We're we're almost done with this. Uh, hold on one second. Okay. I'm sure everybody heard the texting going on. Just uh, talking to my mom about uh, something there. Uh, not super important. Distracting is all hell, though. Uh, yeah, so I forgot what I was talking about. Uh, it feels like I've been playing this game for like seven hours. Um, needless to say, you know, I was like, yeah, I think, uh, I think doing some shit on YouTube again would be fun. Um, if for nothing else, just to keep me occupied, um... You know, and, and we can get into that more later. Uh, obviously none of those. Uh, that was the headbutt I was talking about. That's for the Rampage deck. You can use it in other decks, obviously. I mean, it has its places. Um, there's not a lot of ways to put cards on top of your draw pile, at least for this character. So, you know, not a not bad choice there. Uh, we're going to heal real quick. So we're going to do that. That is a ton of damage, and he should be dead next turn if we get the right cards here. Uh, so we need to do 31 damage, uh, and we need to do it fast because he will scale immensely. Um, not even that he scales. It's that he makes you weak and then starts doing 20 damage a pop, uh, 22 damage as you get in higher ascension levels. So... Yep. Uh, and there's True Grit. That'll help you get wounds out of your deck for the wound meta we were talking about earlier. I'm going to skip that elite. I just want to get this Awaken 1 fight over with. Um, okay, so we're going to do that. We're going to do that. And we did not get the card I wanted, so... We'll do all these. Okay, and you see a bunch of stuff just triggered. Kunai gave us one dexterity, which increases block gain by one. And we got uh, four block from the ornamental fan. Um, these guys you want to take out as fast as possible. They do scale, uh, and they scale fast. Uh, they can get up to, you know, 30, 40 damage before you even know what's happening. Uh, 
All right, so we're in pretty good shape going into the Awaken One fight, provided that nothing complicated happens here. Uh, we'll just do that, I guess. And we might heal before it, just so that we can get the Runic to Decahedron uh, activated. Oh, no, never mind. We just uh, took zero damage. I forgot we had Tungsten Rod. And, of course, uh, Tungsten Rod being... Uh, my nickname when I was a drag racer. <laughs> Alright, so we are actually fully healed, so we're gonna go ahead and look through our deck. Um, is there anything we want to toke? Because you can't toke out that, cannot be removed from your deck. Hmm. I might toke out Thunderclap, I mean, because I got Uppercut. Cleave. Cleave's now useless. We have Whirlwind, which is, uh, you know, a thousand times better. Alright. So that'll also give us uh, more of a chance to draw the cards that we are looking for here. Alright, let's take out one of those guys. So he starts out with a couple of cultists. And, you know, you can see that there's a lot of stuff in the game that, like shows the cultists and hints at them um, you do not find out too much lore you kinda have to piece it together yourself um, so this is going to do 4 damage plus 2 so 9 by 6 because we have chemical X which is why chemical X is such a good card um, and now he's also gonna take uh, 12 damage no oh, 4 16 damage, right? No. Oh. No, 12 damage. I'm sorry. Brain fart there. Uh, he's going to take 12 damage. Um, because uh, he's hitting my thorns. So, which is good because he heals 10 every turn and he does it in his next form as well. Uh, so, let's just do this. And keep him weakened. Get a little bit of shield there. Just keep our... Runic Dodecahedron going. And uh, he, like, attacks every turn as well, so uh, he can get pretty cumbersome. Okay, and unfortunately... Oh, no, Tungsten Rod! Oh, my God. Oh, my God, Tori and Tungsten Rod. Oh, my God. I did not realize how good those would be together. Um, now nah, we don't need to waste the energy. Because this is reducing the fives down to one. This is... Re oh my god. Oh my god. That's so broken. Why didn't I think of that before? That is broke as hell. Alrighty. So. Uh, 41 damage incoming. That is pretty bad. We're about to lose our runic dodecahedron charge. Uh, but that's okay. Um, uh, we still got ice cream... Um, and we got Whirlwind getting more and more powerful as the match goes on. So, uh, at this point we have inevitability. Like, it is inevitable that we will win. Uh, he does not have any defensive buffs, and he has no defensive turns. He does not give himself shield, or metallicize, or plated armor, or anything like that. And we are getting stronger and stronger every round. Um, so it is inevitable that we will win. Uh... And there you go. We won with that perfected strike that I picked up for no reason. Um, so there you go. Uh, that is Slay the Spire. And let's see. I don't remember what you unlock. Of course, this is the heart you fight if you get all the keys, which we're not going to be able to do right now. Uh, yeah, don't care. I unlocked Ascension. And I unlocked some cards. So let's see what we got. We got Heavy Blade. That would have been great. Uh, deals 14 damage strength affects this card three times upgrades to five times spot weakness uh if the enemy intends to attack you gain three strength very good and double your strength and exhaust and it upgrades to not exhaust so you can see that strength is huge for the ironclad so even though the other characters have ways to get strength um they don't utilize it as well as the ironclad does for the most part um and that is it for slay the spire 
I hope you all have a great day.